All right. Good evening. It's six o'clock and I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Those of us joining us online and those that actually made it here in person this evening. Thank you very much. Um, this is our first KSD Together meeting. And part of uh, this evening, we'll go through and we'll figure out what we want to call ourselves if we're going to continue to work together um, throughout the years, uh, working to, to benefit and support the district in regarding to uh, any of our measures, whether it be EPNO, capital, capital tech, bond measures moving forward. So we may want to call ourselves something a little bit more um, cohesive, uh, even though KSD together is, is pretty darn good. But um, we want to see if we're an advisory group or a committee, we're a uh, whatever we want to call ourselves. So we'll go through that uh, a little bit later this evening. First thing we're going to do is introductions. So I put up a slide here. Um, so those people that are online joining us, um, when we get to our online uh, participants, we'll ask you to um, unmute, uh, take your, show your camera, and then introduce yourself, your name, your affiliation. So if you're a parent, uh, and then a parent of which, uh, which strand, so what elementary school, middle school, high school um, are you a part of, and then, uh, or if you're a community member or a staff member. And then we'll ask you to answer the question, why do you want to be a part of this work? And hopefully you, you've all read the email that was sent out um, inviting you to this space. So you have a, a pretty good understanding of why we're here. And then what do you hope to gain from this work? Uh, what do you personally hope to get out of uh, coming together in this space? So we'll kind of get started. We'll start with those that are on the dais this evening, um, staff members and work our way through the room. And then we'll um, we'll jump online and um, uh, do introductions for those that are joining us online this evening. So we'll start over with Mr. Gordon Cook. Good evening. My name is Gordon Cook. I'm the director of facilities. <clears throat> My name is Brett Scribner. I'm the assistant director of capital projects. Hey there, Kyle Olson, director of technology. And Raul Perango, executive director of finance. Dave Buzzard. I'm the executive director of operations. Wade Berenger, Deputy Superintendent. Let's go to Ed. Oh, we got to bring you up to the microphone now. Forgot. <clears throat> that way everyone can hear you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Ed Peterson, I'm a guest employee in communications, and I am here just to observe the process. Okay. Steve? Stand up and get in the line. Yep. Uh, Steve Golliff, I teach fifth grade at Jenkins Creek. Uh, both of my kids went through Panther Lake, Meeker, and Kent Ridge. They both graduated a few years ago by now. Um, my wife's been in the district since 01, and this is my sixth year in the district. Um, I want to be part of this because we need to figure out how to get things passed. And not just 50% plus one, but we need to be able to get to 60% to do the real work. And uh, so I hope to gain some experience and knowledge as to how we're going to do that. Great. Thank you. Next. Uh, Annie Sheely, and I'm a teacher at Canyon Ridge, and I'm just here to uh, observe and help any way I can. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Patricia Weiler, Medellin. I am at Sus Creek. I'm the office manager, and I am here because I'm excited to be a part of this committee. I want to see where we are at, what we can do to engage the community, to see what steps we need to give to um, approve things and grow, grow together, heal, and gain trust, because this is a great district, and working together, we'll do this. Thank you. Thank you. All right, hi, welcome. We just, we're just doing an introduction, so not to put you on the spot. Do you just want to come up and introduce yourself? <laughs> uh, I'm Katie Countryman. Hi, Katie. Okay. 
are you here for the KSD together to be a part of the uh, committee to work on bonds, levies, and other ballot measures for the years to come? Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> do you have a child or are you an employee of the district community member? I do have children. Yeah, they exist. <laughs> yes, I have a child in uh, Park Orchard Elementary. Okay. Right. She's in first grade. Um, did you come uh, hoping to gain anything from this experience? And You know, I kind of thought this was a PTA meeting, but I'm still oh. happy to be here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little different than a PTA meeting. It is a lot different, but I am happy to provide input and that's about it. Yeah. Well, if you would like to stay, you're more than willing. You can, totally you can definitely do that. If not, no worries. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Any, okay. Uh, um, would you like to, to introduce yourself, please? So we're doing names and then uh, any KSD affiliations right there on the board. Or on the um, there, and then what you hope to be a part, or why you want to be a part of this, and then what do you hope to gain? Great. Uh, my name is Erica Billiard. I have students at both Seuss Creek and KLA, and I'm a parent and essentially a full time volunteer. Um, I want to be a part of this work because I want to make things better. I am not a complainer. I I want to do something, and I I know we can be so much better. I know we can do so much better. I think there's a massive cultural problem that's been ingrained through several superintendents now and, um, and boards. And I know we can work towards something better. So I want to be a part of that. And I, 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 I'm a hard worker. So um, well, you're in the right place. Then You're definitely in the okay. right place. And we appreciate uh, you I being guess here. I hope, I hope to, uh, to move forward in a really move forward in a better direction, um, not just lip service. Uh, I was on the, um, I was on the, oh, I forget what it was called, uh, the COVID committee. Um, that was a lot of lip service um, and a lot of Melissa doing the directing and um, uh, it was, it, but I wanna really work towards, towards something better. So okay. yeah. Well, thank you for being Thanks. here. Thank you. Nope. Did you, I don't think you answered the why or what, did you want to come to the podium and answer <laughs> either one of those? Cause I think I know that you thought it was a PTA meeting, but I just want to make sure you have, You're the fine. you don't have to, if you don't want to, You're no, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Nate, um, who do we want to call in first in our, Arnold, whoever, I don't have the name, so, yep. What do we have on there? Start at the top. So um, we've got an anonymous anonymous person on, so um, if you could identify yourself, uh, if you could unmute, mute, introduce yourself, um, and just let us know your affiliation with KSD, and then the two questions, if you could do that for us. All right, we'll come back to you. Mike, Mike, if you could unmute, mute, uh, introduce yourself and uh, answer the questions for us. Good evening, my name is uh, Michael Ramirez. My had uh, several kids uh, graduate from Kent School District and one still uh, there. Um, I've been uh, involved with uh, Kentwood High School uh, as part of my job and with my kids. Um, so I've been here now, it's going on 10 years on every, every school district within Covington. Or, I'm sorry, every school within Covington. Uh, you know, I've seen it grow from the old Covington Elementary to the new one. Uh, and it was just kind of concerning to see these last two uh, levy measures not pass and hearing from other parents and just kind of rumors going around as to why. Uh, figured instead of, you know, just not helping, trying to figure out if there's anything I could do since, uh, you know, still living in the community at some point, my grandchildren might go to the school. So I figured I'd try to help. Well, I appreciate you being here, Mike, and, and thanks for sharing that. All right, back 
Let's go to uh, Brian. Brian, are you there? You able to unmute? Introduce yourself. All right, we'll come back to Brian. Oh, there we go. I think I'm uh, on mute. Are you able to help me? There you are, Brian. Okay. Hello. Uh, um, my Brian Burton. I've been been um, in the public school system since um, well, actually, uh, kindergarten up. So um, Panther Lake Elementary. My 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 kid is uh, now almost fifteen in uh, KLA. Um, want to contribute um, anything? Any knowledge I can uh, offer to the group? Uh, so far, we've had a fantastic experience. Um, uh, very positive whatsoever. So, uh, just any uh, knowledge we can offer. So, thank you. Great. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you being here this evening. Casey? Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Casey. I have two children in the Kent School District. I have one at Matson and one at Meridian Elementary. Um, the reason why I want to be involved with this is just because I feel like as a whole community, we got to come together to be better for our kids and not just for your own kids, but for everybody. And that's the only way we're going to like be better as a whole, you know, as the world. So yeah, for world peace, I guess. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Casey. Appreciate you being here. Faith. Good evening, I'm Faith Sisley, and I'm here as a ASD staff member, but also a parent of 4K ASD graduates uh, who are all doing amazing things. So I can attest to the um, great school district that I'm proud to be a part of. Um, what I would like to, uh, why do I wanna be a part of this work is because I really want to share with our community that we are trying our best to be open and transparent and honest and really want to work with our community to listen to what the needs are and to also um, share information as well. So I'm here to help and support and also listen. Thanks, Faith. Kristen. Hi there, I am Kristen Roy, and I have two kids in the Kent School District. One's at Northwood, the other is at Lake Youngs. Um, my hope for this work with this committee is to be able to do great things. Our district is an amazing district and we've had some issues. And so to rebuild trust and to get the community on the same page and engage partners that are typically not included in these conversations like our multilingual families and native families. Great, thank you, Kristen. <laughs> Melissa. Hello, my name is uh, Melissa Liu. I am a parent of two boys who attend Springbrook Elementary. Um, they are in first and fourth grade, so we're still relatively new um, school parents in the district. Um, I would like to be a part of this work and hope to gain are kind of the same thing. Um, I, you know, hear from community members and other parents who go to, to schools in the um, district as to why things aren't working and it's unclear what's true and what's not true. And so I'm hoping um, to be not only part of the solutions, but to just grow my own knowledge in how things work and being able to help navigate that with my um, friends and family who are in the district um, and see the levees pass as we've talked about with flying colors. Um, our school was impacted by the last two not passing. And so I just would like to be a part of the solution so we can help make our district even better yeah. than it already is. So this is Thank you, Melissa. $403 left over after we pay all these bills. Mm -hmm. So do we want to do, like, what do we want to do out of this? Because you guys... <laughs> She's being a good mom and helping her kid with homework. Mm. That's all. Uh, Michelle? Hi there. Um, my name is Michelle McCormick, and I'm a parent in the school district. Um, I have two kids, one um, graduated from Kent Meridian, uh, in 2023, my other uh, daughter is a junior at Kent Ridge High School. Um, 
And um, I want to be a part of this because I think there's uh, currently a feeling of lack of communication between um, the district and parents. Um, I, I, and so I think that I really wanted to be able to learn more and to hopefully be able to help um, with that communication and be able to, to see, you know, where that communication gap is and be able to hopefully, um, you know, see, see where that is and, and maybe be able to bring some of that information back to the district and hopefully some of the people that I talk to that feel like the district isn't hearing them can also see that the district is, you know, at least trying to listen to what they're, they're wanting, to, you know, what, what their ideas are, so. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Valerie? Oh, hello, um, Valerie Hitch. I am a parent in KSD. My kid went to Sunrise is in Meridian currently and will go to Kentwood. Um, similar to what most everyone else has said, I want to be a part of this um, to help kind of bridge the gaps and give the community perspective and try to figure out how we can bridge those gaps. And then um, what I hope to gain from this work is a better understanding of how things work at KSD. Thank you, Valerie. It was Michelle. No. Um, do we have the anonymous anonymous person? Are you able to identify yourself? Just want to ask one more time. I want to make sure everybody who's here is here for all the right reasons and here to be a part of this work. Everything that everyone has said thus far, I truly appreciate. You're all right. Um, and that's the work that we need to be doing in this group and we will be doing in this group moving forward. So appreciate that. Um, if we're not able to get a response from that person, if we can just, they dropped. Okay, good. Perfect. Um, uh, Mr. Cook, you came in, you were out. If you want to come up and do a quick introduction um, and answer those questions for us, that'd be great. Thank you. Hi there. So I'm Donald Cook. I'm a school board member here in uh, Kent School District. Um, I want to be part of this. So Mr. Because, Cook, can yeah. I just, uh, are you here as a parent or are you here as a board member? I don't get a choice in that. I am a board member all the time. So community members are going to talk to me as if I'm a board member, whether I want them to or not. So I will always be a board member. But that's but a, I appreciate but you, that. But I've been in many, many meetings yes, sir. when it's, um, when you have a political affiliation, yes, if, you, if you come, you should say that the things that you're going to say is not from the position that you hold in a school district. So if you're going to be here as a parent, well, I can, you know what I'm saying? I, I just, can promise you this. I am not going to be asking questions. I'm not going to be asking anything of anyone. The only thing I'm planning on doing here is listening to my community. So there won't be a point where I will be providing any information as a board member, as that would be inappropriate to do so. Okay. Appreciate it. Just you. wanted to make sure we're on the same level. Yeah, thank you. I was going to address that, but okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, so the reason that I want to be part of this work is so that I can listen to my community. I can hear what they have to say um, and make sure that we are addressing it when we speak amongst the board. Um, I think it's important that we do so, and hopefully that will help. Um, as far as what I hope to gain is the information, right? I want to know what people are concerned about, what they're what they would like us to do as a district, and how we can best move forward to make sure our, everyone's concerns are met, um, and that we address anything that we might need to address. So that's about it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It's not. It's not clicking. There we go. Um, I just want to come back to the purpose. Um, I think everyone understood uh, the purpose of this particular group. And I wanted to just kind of share it again. And then I'm going to go in a little bit more detail of what this, this group will uh, be working on and focusing on as well. Um, I, again, appreciate everyone that shared why they're here, um, what they hope to gain from this group. I hope they, and, and also um, what they want to contribute. So I appreciate that. Yes, we're conducting these KSD together um, meetings, we'll call them whatever we want to call them, advisory groups, whatever, um, because we we need community voice, we need alternative perspectives, we need different voices in this space to help us do better as a district when it comes to meet the needs of our community on uh, any ballot measures that go uh, forward. Because as I pointed out earlier, uh, we've we've been struggling 
uh, these last three ballot measures and, and we need to do something different and drastically different because um, uh, we need to pass for our kids and for our, our community. So that's what this is. And so we are hoping through the 325 emails we send out for those who identified themselves as wanting to be a part of that, that, that uh, we'd get just slightly under 325. I think we're just a little bit off of that <laughs> with about 10 or 12 of us. Maybe the second meeting will um, have additional people and we hope that those that are here uh, will continue to, to stay with us. So we do wanna create a space and an environment um, where we can have transparent, open communication, two-way communication and conversation. It may be that as we get through some of these conversations, it may not all be tonight, obviously, because we only have 40 minutes left, but we may need some support from our community to really define what transparency looks like and sounds like, um, because that is a word that has been used very frequently within the community um, uh, in, in, in uh, sharing their frustration or concerns with the district over the last few years and even prior to that. And I wanna make sure that we are truly understanding from the perspective of our community, what does that truly mean to our uh, community members? So we'll probably get into that, maybe not tonight, but we will eventually, um, because that's going to be important. Um, we want to make sure if, if that is a big deal, and that's maybe what's holding people back from trusting um, or feeling like we're listening, then we want to make sure that we can really define that so we're not missing, um, missing out on that. We're going to serve as a platform for sharing ideas, addressing concerns. So there will be concerns that will be brought up here, working together to develop strategies to support our, our commitment to equity, excellence, and community. And again, it, it is a space for us to engage in conversation and work to a better outcome than what we've had in the previous three um, ballot measures, because that's exactly what we need to do. We can't kid ourselves and think that um, things are going to work out perfectly um, just by making an adjustment here or there. So this is one of those pieces that when we said um, two months ago, I said, I think standing in this room, whether it was a levy listening session or it was at a board meeting, um, that uh, we were going to conduct a, a create a space for a committee to get together and work with us through the years around our ballot measures. And that really means, and I'm gonna, you'll see that here in a second, um, uh, kind of getting involved and engaging in this space and being um, helpful and, and overseeing and providing advice and advisory to our project lists to um, other things. And, and I'll get to that slide here in a second. So I apologize for that. Any questions about the purpose? We wanted to leave it open and broad enough. So yes, if there are things that you want to share that, that are concerning, what we don't want to get into, and I'll talk about that in a second too, is we don't want to get into the finger pointing and the blaming. And everybody who shared tonight, I appreciate everyone saying like, hey, I'm here to help us get better because we need to get better. Absolutely. We all know that KSD is not perfect. We all know there's things we need to work on, we need to address. If we can address those in a way that are solution oriented, it's gonna be a lot easier for us to be able to continue to work in that space versus feeling like fingers are pointed all the time. Like you don't listen, you don't listen. Like how, how can we listen better? If people don't feel like we're listening or we're not transparent, what do we need to do to show you that we are transparent and we do wanna um, uh, get you to trust us. And so. That's why the parents and community members in this uh, group will be helpful for us because we're not always in those seats and we don't always see from your perspective and, and we obviously are missing some things. Um, so this committee is gonna be important that we're consistent, but we're gonna keep students and their needs at our forefront. Obviously that is our work. Our core work is teaching and learning uh, with an emphasis on learning being our students. Um, we're going to engage in collaborative discussions and problem solving. We're going to work together. No one side has all the answers. We've already proven that, or we would be passing all of our ballot measures, and, and we haven't. So we're here to, to engage in two-way communication and learn and grow together um, from one another. Uh, provide valuable input on future bond and levy measures. We talked about that. Learn about district processes directly from KSD staff, because I know there are some <clears throat> misnomers or some information out there about how we may or may not come to how we prioritize projects or how we um, choose to have projects on a list and and uh, or build a project list. This is a space to talk about all that stuff. 
We're here to answer all those questions. It may not all be tonight, but we will be engaging in conversations that you, because this is your committee, we created this space for our community to come here and engage us in conversation, not for us just to talk at you. Um, we want to make sure that we're meeting your needs uh, and, and vice versa. And then, of course, asking questions and receiving responses from staff members. We want to make sure that you feel like your needs are being met. Um, just some norms that we would normally have in meetings, and I think it's pretty simple. I think listening to everyone share their their why they're here this evening, I feel confident that uh, we can always we can all uh, agree on these. <clears throat> Anytime you're 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 going to speak, just pause and consider what you want to say. Stay engaged as much as possible. Keep in mind there's voices not in the room. And again, if we have ten people or twelve people, we had three hundred twenty five people that were interested. We have. 25,000 students, 20,000 families that this group um, of people who have, are will eventually hopefully commit themselves to this work, will you'll be the voices um, of our uh, school district when it comes to parents. So we're hoping that we'll be able to engage more as, as time goes on, but we really would like to get a commitment um, sooner than later. So voices outside the room right now, uh, we you guys are the voices for those that aren't here. Um, ask if you don't understand, always ask clarifying questions. No, no questions, a stupid question. Be open to alternative perspectives. I think that's open, just being open-minded and knowing that there are potentially two sides to every situation. Listen whether others are talking. So it's just respect. Um, all opinions are honored and respect others. Um, so pretty basic. Here's what we're thinking from this committee. And then we're going to get into uh, hopefully uh, those that are participating this evening, tell us more of like what you want from us and what do you want to see from these meetings? Um, so we're thinking from our side in this space, if we're committing to, uh, this is a long standing committee where it's it's for years, it's not just we're gonna meet for, for two months and then we have our levy. This particular committee is really more of a, an advisory committee that will last for years to come that will help us be a part of all this work. You'll be the ones that have the, the knowledge and the uh, perspective on things that potentially so many others do not have. Um, you have the ability to, to tend uh, various site visits. What we'd like to do is not just always be in this boardroom. This boardroom, the reason we're in the boardroom is because this is the only space in the district that really allows us uh, to be able to have online and in person. And we'd like to be able to rotate around to the various school uh, areas and just have in-person meetings and have those spaces. And if we let people know ahead of time, um, well in advance, and hopefully we can have people that will join us in those spaces, because we'd like to do some site visits if people had questions about projects and what got done and what didn't get done and what are the things on the list that may be um, uh, at the, the their age of failure Go to those spaces, look at that. What do those look like? Um, and be in some of those spaces as well. Um, and also in the future, thinking about the needs of our future measures. And so what kind of projects need to be on the next ones? And if you're out there in our buildings with us, then you might be able to see like, oh my gosh, this is a this this particular roof is really bad, or this boiler or this floor or this paint job or that field or whatever it is, um, you'll have firsthand knowledge and, and perspective. So again, we'd like to, to meet in person moving forward. Um, I know that's not ideal for everyone, uh, but we'd like to rotate our meetings and not just be in the boardroom. We'd like to get out of here and actually be in our schools. Um, and so that would be a goal of ours. That would be a conversation we can have at the end of this meeting. Because in the end, this meeting is for you. Uh, it is for the community. Um, and you know we're, we wanna try to make sure that we can meet your needs. So if that is contrary to all in person, then let's have that conversation. Maybe there's an opportunity for some sort of rotation. Um, we would need you to assist in overseeing the future um, and current projects uh, with us. Um, so when we get ready to go out for a bond and we get ready to go out for a, uh, another capital uh, tech levy, this committee will have been with us and will work with us on uh, creating that project. It's very similar to the bond task force uh, when we went out and asked uh, community members, parents, to be a part of the debt bond task force. Um, this group will be like that task force per se. You'll have knowledge and um, information by being a part of these ongoing meetings that we're going to have 
um, and you'll be able to help guide us um, uh, and give us advice in areas that maybe from a different perspective that we don't have. Assisting determining project timeline or priorities. And then in the end, the goal is, and I heard everyone here wanting to make KSD better. KSD is a great district, but you know, we, we, we've got, we got things we need to take care of. We need to address. There's no doubt. So if we can get to the place where when you're in this space, as time goes on, you feel like you have enough factual information and knowledge to be a, like a KSD ambassador. It's just a title. It's not something that you're going to be, you know, you're not going to be knighted a KSD ambassador, but the mm -hmm. more knowledge you have, the more you can share uh, with those people in the community that are asking you questions. I know I run a, a parent forum. Uh, I know Brian, who's on this call, happens to be a part of that parent forum. And we get share a lot of information in that group. And they have a lot of knowledge that they can share then with other parents and community members when they're interacting with them. This group will be very similar, except this is going to be very focused on all of our ballot measures and how we can work with our community, how we can do better. And again, if transparency and trust and communication are those are the pieces we need to work on, that may be a major part of these conversations uh, moving forward. And then the last thing we'll talk about is just future meetings. The next one's on the 30th. So I don't want to talk all night, and that's all I really wanted to kind of go through. I did have a couple other slides, but I would like to open it up um, and listen and hear from our community that's here both online and in person around what's your expectation for these meetings moving forward? Having shared this with you, sharing with you what, what we're hoping that, that you can be a part of and commit to, um, what would you like to see the structure of these meetings be? Because we didn't create this for us to talk at you. Uh, we created this space because we need your perspective. We need your help. We need your support. So how do you envision um, future meetings going? What would you like to see in those spaces? We can definitely bring information, share information. Um, that's not a problem at all. We just don't want to assume that's what you want. And so we feel like if you could help share with us what you expect from these meetings, then we can help to kind of create the space that is meaningful for everyone who wants to be involved with this work. So anybody online, if you want to raise your hand, uh, you could do that. And then anybody in the box. audience want to go first? I think this is answering your question. Um, so if we're going to pass levies or bonds, I think the first thing, I think the first, one of the first things people are hung up on is kind of what, what are the long range plans for, um, let me back up. At one of the previous meetings, I don't remember who it was, they talked about having kind of a, a spreadsheet of kind of the condition of all the buildings and the, um, you know, when things were installed, the alarms and all this other stuff. And now we're hearing, you know, we have stuff from 1992 and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think this is just me spitballing, but maybe having that information, where is everything right now as far as deferred maintenance with the roofs or boilers or whatever it is. So I can answer that one. Um, so the previous or the last six year state and study was done in 2018. Um, so we have that study done. It is in a very rudimentary uh, paper format that does not, you know, dot this all the way down. I am in the process right now of building a spreadsheet of every school of every device. And then it was when it was originally uh, installed, the last time it was replaced, the longevity or the, you know, the, the uh, date of life yeah. expectancy yeah. Yeah. and when it needs to be replaced the next time. So that is going to be for 44 schools. And right now I think Gordon, we're up to maybe 70, 70 to 80 line items, because if you think I'm just going to pick out um, what school do you go to, what school do you teach at? Jenkins Creek. Perfect. So think yes. of Jenkins Creek, think of every single um, univent that's in there. So if we're going to talk about HVAC, your univent is your item that brings in the air, heats it. 
Okay. And I'm you familiar know with those. So yeah. I would have to, so there's uh, 28, 32 classrooms there, I'm going to guess. Um, so when you think about that as like that device, that device may have went bad. We probably replaced it, but maybe in that room. So again, it's that individual device. We're not going to do that. It's HVAC as a total. So parking lots as a total, roof as a total. What do you, what do you mean by a total? Yeah, so all of them. Because in it, if you're going to replace one, more than likely, that thing has already ex exceeded its life expectancy. So technically, we should be replacing all of them because they only sure. last a, a certain amount of time. But it's the maintenance team that keeps those things running. So really, it's and that's what we've been really good at. We've been really good at keeping things going longer. Right. I, um, I know all that. I know all that. So okay. that's what I'm saying. I, I feel like if we're going to plan out future bonds, we kind of no, need to know the state of the facilities. That is correct. Overall. So we were putting uh, that. And in also, I just want to clarify, we have boilers with and blowers in the room, but we don't have air conditioning. We don't have HVAC. We do not have And HVAC. even the ventilation is is like, mm -hmm. you know, ventilation with yeah. air quotes. So yeah. HVAC is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Right. So we don't have air conditioning. But you have HVAC street. in your building. Well, AC is without AC. Right. So it's HV and the V is very loose. I'm using the term loosely when I yeah. talked about the V part. So anyways, I think that would be a baseline for whatever else we're going to do. Okay. Use the terminology. You're right. We have all that. I think like Dave's saying, we're, it's a matter of putting it all in one place. We're working on putting it all in, by building all in one sheet. Other questions, thoughts? Things you'd like to share, directions you'd like us to go. I see Michelle. Um, am I, can you hear me? <laughs> um, one thing that I think is really important is that we, um, you know, just like right there, there was, you know, a defining of terms. Even there, you know, that, you know, you're saying HVAC, he's saying, well, we don't have AC, so it's not HVAC. So I think there, it's really important that when we communicate with the public that we define the terms that we're using, because I think that that can really create, um, you know, it can really create um, miscommunication between people. Um, and so that's something that I think as a group, we need to be able to decide, you know, we need as a group, we have to decide how we're going to communicate things, how we're going to define the terms that we're using as, as a group ourselves, so that then we can communicate them clearly and they can be communicated clearly to others. Because when you call it HVAC, a lot of people are like, well, we don't have HVAC. We don't have air conditioning in our school. And you're talking about, you know, I mean, I've seen like, you know, we're, we're going to be replacing the HVAC at a school. Well, they're like, well you're talking about boilers. I've, I've just heard people say that. You're not replacing HVAC because you're replacing a boiler, you know? And so I think that's, there's, that's where some of the, um, some of that comes into play is that the terms aren't being used in the same way. Does that, does that make sense? Makes total sense. It's a great so point. I think, <laughs> I think we need to be clearer with the terms that we use and how we define those things. Okay. So going forward, I, that's a great point. So going forward, any school that does not have AC, we will, Gordon will just have to, we will refer to that as a heating system or heating ventilation system. Or something like that. Yeah, because I think people just get confused by it. They're like, well, they're not they're not putting in HVAC. They're just replacing a boiler, <laughs> you know. Steve had a good question. And let me just, right, so I'll just answer right now. So heating, HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air condition does not necessarily mean air conditioning, mechanical cooling. When you run air through a filter, you're conditioning the air. So that the term HVAC covers a broad spectrum of equipment. So we do need to define that, you know, it that's an HVAC system, whether it has air conditioning or not, but we can certainly define if it has mechanical cooling with that. In the Northwest, historically, it hasn't been as warm. So a lot of our buildings were built to use outside air for cooling. So that's not mechanical cooling, but it was still cooling. Um, so, you know, as things have, buildings have gotten tighter, conditions have changed, um, environment has changed we've moved to mechanical cooling 
but all those systems are HVAC. Uh, but it's a good it's a good question and it's a good point and I agree we do need to define that so that everybody understands exactly what we mean when when we say those things. So maybe I, it's HVAC great. with or without the true AC Mechanic, mechanical cooling. That's what <laughs> we Mechan it's mechanical what cooling. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I think I think this just proves a point uh, about understanding. I think it's a good point um, because when we say HVAC. Back a couple of slides. Uh, oh, sorry. Where it says ask a question if you don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Same. No, I mean, again, we we live as KSD staff in a space that when we refer to HVAC, we have an understanding of what that is. But that is not necessarily understanding of everybody else who lives in that space or understands that. And so that's a this was a, a good example. And I know there's a, a million more. So thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to speak to the, um, the expectation of meeting in person. Uh, it was difficult for me to get here on time tonight because my husband works and we have to, I have to get dinner on the table and, you know, get the kids settled. Um, he had to take my kids to scouts. Um, I think that, uh, it's great for us to meet in person. I love the idea of um, of site visits and seeing the state of the district. Um, I think the expectation that all committee members will meet in person, you know, uh, a certain amount or as much as possible is problematic and also problematic because this is a pretty homogenous group. And I'm guessing online, the people we have online is also fairly homogenous as well. Um, I, I think that's really excluding, you know, some really great uh, opinions from others in the community um, by, by setting up that expectation. And as a digital promise district and one-on-one -on -one laptops and stuff, we should have the capability and with smart boards and all this amazing expensive technology, we should have the capability of whichever school we're in whichever library we're in at least to be able to uh, integrate online, um, you know, capabilities with that, with these meetings. So uh, I would like to put that forward as, as, a, as a hope that we bring in as many people and as many opinions as possible rather than excluding people because they can't get here. Yep. No, I appreciate that. Thank you, Erica. Yeah, I know that's when, when we uh, put that out in the survey, we got 325 or so responses and we um, we were hoping that um, more people would be available, um, which I know the last Monday of the month may or may not work six to seven o'clock may not may or may not work. Um, so the hope is that we can kind of create space um, and to your point um, that more people can attend uh, more frequently because it, you're right. I mean. 12 voices is not going to get us where we need to be. Um, you know, 30, 40 voices that then share with 30 or 40 and then 30 or 40, then we're going to be in a better place. So I do appreciate that. And um, that's important perspective. Oh, hand raise. Mike. Oh, yeah. Um, I just had a recommendation. Um, I don't know if it might be worthwhile to kind of go over, maybe not today, but go over the last uh, three levies uh, from what I understand. I, I thought it was only two, but I'm, from what I'm understanding, the last three levies didn't pass. Is that correct? Uh, it was the bond. bond and then the two uh, levies after that. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe kind of look at those. We don't have to go over them in detail, but I think to kind of set uh, a base going forward, here is what we've done, the last three. Obviously, they didn't pass. Now let's move forward and see why um, all these topics about, you know, what the communication, making sure people understand our wording and how the message gets out there. I, I think maybe be something to look at, um, maybe for the next meeting or something, if we can kind of summarize those levies going forward so we can kind of know what it is that happened. So we're not guessing or just assuming. Yeah, thank, thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. I had 
I mean, I've got, I've got a grocery list of, I probably have content for 50 meetings. One of the things that I was thinking about, I appreciate you bringing that up. I, I wanted you guys to create this. So I appreciate you sharing that. We have information to be able to go over the, the last three failed um, capital measures, the bond and the two cap tech levies, um, go over the project list, go over the survey information, go over the approaches to what we did on the informational campaign um, and be able to kind of go through like, okay, what did we do? What worked, what didn't work um, and learn from that. So I appreciate you saying that. Um, I wrote that down. Um, and I'm looking here, I one of the slides I actually have is just to show the results and the cost of those. Um, but we obviously have slide decks uh, with it, that information to be able to go through that. And you're right, it might not be tonight, but um, it might be a, a nice foundational piece for us to go through and say, okay, this is what we know. This is what we need to do better um, and moving forward. So I appreciate you sharing that. And I do just want to bring up a, a good point with this committee or group uh, advisory board, whatever we're going to call it. Um, if you're requesting information, information will be provided to you. So if you wanted the uh, project information, like wait, uh, Dr. Berenger had said, um, for the bond in the last two levies that did not uh, pass, we can get that. If you need information on the 2016 bond or the 2018 levy, that's currently um, in the cap, uh, the tech levy as well. Any information that you want, as long as it does not uh, affect our bidding process for projects that have not started, we are more than welcome to share that information um, with this group and the committee. And it's been shared with the board members uh, during the last capital projects um, uh, work session. So we're more than happy to share that information with you. Kristen? Kristen? Kristen, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I think in addition to taking a look at what the parent survey, when the um, parent survey went out in terms of what was important to them, does that match the ask of what's happening in the, yeah. the levy? Um, and then also just a suggestion to what I think other districts do really well is they put out to their public an incredibly detailed list of what they're going to be using levy money and bond money for. Um, so it's it's very clear and very transparent, and then it doesn't feel like, oh, there was something that was, you know, now we have a, a contract issue or whatever, and we have to spend this extra money on it. So just keeping it very clear and concise, transparent to the numbers. Yeah, Kristen, thank you for that. Uh, the 2016 bond and the 2018 levy were very precise projects uh, listed on there. Um, you know, bond projects... Uh, you know, bonds are for buildings, levies are for uh, either deferred maintenance or other critical items that need to be replaced. Um, in the levy structure, again, there is some uh, movement that can be done if a project, a more emergent project can come up. Uh, with a bond, it takes a little bit more um, information and, and uh, things to be able to be done with the bond so it can be changed. So Again, uh, we hear you, uh, we understand that, and uh, we're working towards a, uh, a much uh, a streamlined solution uh, to keep those projects on board. I'll, I'll go ahead and kind of add to that, Dave. Um, and, and this might kind of go for a few of the other comments that were out there as well. I think that this Citizen Advisory Committee will um, be crucial in, in uh, tracking and identifying projects that we need to pull up uh, going forward. There was a lot of work that was done uh, with the bond task force in, uh, and our consultants uh, and going through our uh, project lists. And you know we actually had almost $2 billion worth of identified needs. That was whittled down to about 700 million and then again down to 495 million. Uh, when that bond failed, uh, we did take those projects and I'm kind of repeating myself uh, for knowledge that's already out there, but uh, those projects were then taken into the levy uh, that failed. And we're kind of whittled down now to just the emergent needs and health and safety projects that were identified. Um, but I think that this committee will be able to see all of those projects. Uh, we'll be able to put all that information back out there. And uh, this group of people will be able to help us then uh, figure out a path forward uh, 
when we're devising those those strategies for those projects. Thanks, Brian. So even though this isn't a PTA meeting, I still have <laughs> questions. Great. Um, uh, one of the things that I'm trying to do at the PTA is um, inclusivity, right? We have such a dynamic and multicultural community right here in Kent, uh, a huge international community. Language is such a hard barrier to go across to many parents that me just even asking them to show up for the PTA meeting, right? I'm asking parent volunteers to help translate for me because I only speak English sometimes pretty well. Um, and I can do a little Spanish, but not very good. Uh, so asking community help in translation could be helpful. I do think it would be good for us to go to schools, whether or not you can attend. In per it's not going to hurt. I shouldn't think that somebody should be at a disadvantage by not being able to attend in person. But for families of low income that can't make it all the way here, that don't have transportation here, I think going to local high schools tend to be a more centralized location for them. Um, and then maybe hearing from the principals or of the local schools, middle schools, have them bring those presentations, have students come up and say, hey, look, I couldn't get this done today because I, you know, my laptop broke or, you know, it was really hot in the class. And, you know, also side note, I'm from Florida. Why do you all not have AC? This is like the most obscure thing I've ever heard of. Um, so climate change, AC, good to have. Um, so yeah, does that sound interesting? Having us go to schools, still have online accessibility, because I think some apps do allow for English to other language translation. And if it doesn't, make sure it does. Because <laughs> um, I think that's, you know, it, I don't speak Nepali. And there's a couple of Nepali families. There's a couple Hindi families. You know, I need their help. I'm sure you guys need help. Right. Thank you. Yeah, and we're willing to translate um, to anybody who is... Uh, lets us know they want to attend something like that. The tough part about having like in real time translation services is not knowing who's going to come. Um, but if we know ahead of time, we'll make sure someone's here. And that's why when we transitioned to the new uh, um, website, not, yeah, the new website, um, we now have access for everything to be translated right there on the website, which is super nice, uh, much more helpful and beneficial to our families. But you're right. We're still... We're missing that piece. I mean, even to Erica's point of like, you know, when you start to create a space where this is this is where you want the people to be, then it does limit people um, in those spaces. So how do we how do we find that um, that sweet spot where everyone can have access and feel like they can access the material and things that we're sharing and even the dialogue and conversation? Um, and again, that's another piece of this. Help us build this as we're doing it. Um, we, we want to get better. We need to get better in engaging our community. Um, so help us. I mean, if family members and staff are hearing from others about, oh, I wish they would do this, or, you know, how come they're not doing more of this? Um, I don't want everyone out there in the community to think that we have all the answers or that everyone's told us what's wrong and we just haven't fixed it or we're ignoring them. Like sometimes you might think we know, but we don't all know. And so... Um, sometimes just got to be bold and say like, Hey, you need to change this or we need to do this. And then we can figure out, how, can we do that? It's a large organization. Not everything can happen like that, but, um, we need to do different to do better. So appreciate that. We have two hands raised, right? Michelle, Michelle, um, go ahead. Yeah. I just, um, I think in addition to, to seeing like what, um, was in the, in the levies and the bonds that didn't pass. I think it's also really important to see from like the levies that did pass, what where we're at on every single project that was in there. If something wasn't completed, why wasn't it completed? And what was completed instead? You know, those type of things, because those questions do come up. Um, and so I think it's really important for us to have that information too. 
in case like if something's in the 2018 levy, but it didn't get completed for some reason. So now it's in another levy or another bond, you know, it looks like it's being duplicated or like money wasn't spent correctly, or, you know, it can be, it can be confusing. Um, and so I think it's really important to have that clarity. Um, so that might be good information to have also. Um, and then I don't know if you could see what I put in the question and answer. I just put that there for some reference information for you. I just, it was something I saw the other day. I thought it was okay. um, interesting. I thought it was very clear, uh, fairly a nice communication that was done. Thanks, Michelle. Yep, I'll have them forward that to me. Uh, in regards to your um, your request to, to be, I guess, more transparent about our bond and levy items and their completion rates. And if they weren't completed, you know, why weren't they completed? And, and if they were changed, why were they changed? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's something that we have one we've shared with the board for sure. And I believe that it's also out there or was out there on the old website. Is it on the new website yet? I have not seen it on the new website, but it was on the old website for sure. So, uh, we will get that information put back out there. Yes, Ed. Yeah. Maybe Ed can answer that question. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to speak for Faith or anybody else on her team, but um, we do have those documents. They should be on the website now. If they're not, we will do our best to get them on there tomorrow. So on those, so what uh, I believe what the, Mr. Peterson's talking about, it uh, should have a list of 2018, 2016 bond and 2018 levy, just the capital projects, not the tech levy. It's just capital, I believe. Mm -hmm. And what it will show you is that what's completed, what's in progress and what's still not uh, started yet. That's pretty much where, where those uh, items are. And I, I believe they also show each individual project, the over or under budget, oh. where, where they were. And then, then uh, yeah, so that's the, the document end. that I was talking earlier um, when we presented, when uh, uh, Brett presented to the board uh, for the uh, capital projects work session, uh, all the board members got that uh, sheet where it showed if it came under budget, if it came was over budget, the original budget, um, and again, we all know that uh, escalation has uh, risen. Uh, ast it's astounding of where money is, what it costs for projects these days. And you have to remember the 2016 bond, uh, that was a 2012 committee that was put together. Um, they didn't go out in 2012. In 2015, uh, they came back to that uh, committee and put those numbers in. Even with the escalation, there are still projects that have not been started today in the 2016 bond that had original budgets from 2015. So it would be like, how much would an HVAC system cost? I'm just going to say that whole system. What would it cost uh, to replace in 2016 versus what it would cost in 2024 or 25 or 26? So that's what you have to really think about. And we can give you all that data too. Mortis and Company in Seattle is probably the number one prospect around here that shows exactly where all the construction data sets. They're very well known on the West Coast. Um, and, and Brett has all that information. He can share that with this committee as well too. Ryan. Yes. Um... What's in the November 2024 capital levy? Because obviously the election is coming up in about six weeks and the presidential election years are the most um, um, most chances to get more more voters, either yay or nay. But what's in the 2024 capital levy? When you say what's in it, are you talking about the uh, projects and things like that? Is that? Yeah, what's in the projects? Yeah, what's in the projects? Just, just overall big, big scheme, yeah. I don't, let me see if I have that PowerPoint. Well, I'd have it on my slide. Do you have it handy to rattle that off? Uh, for the projects on the 2024 levy. Um, yeah, we do have uh, Mill Creek and Kent Ridge Fields. We have uh, six portable roofs. We have the fueling center at the transportation site. Um, we have the emergency power for the central kitchen fridge and freezer and then we have uh seven roof replacements at various schools we have six boiler replacements at various schools 
and um, we have a uh, exterior uh, stucco repair at Kentwood, and we have um, four fire alarms uh, that are on their way out. And I'll just talk about the technology stuff real quick. We've got device replacements, uh, we've got document cameras, we've got some classroom display technology, we've got switch wireless access points, disaster recovery, business continuity plans, uh, cybersecurity uh, monitoring services, we've got district network cabling systems. We've got classroom voice amplification systems. We've got replacement of intercom system. That one's a district-wide um, UPS, uh, which stands for uninterruptible power system. Uh, students, uh, internet for students at home, hotspots, uh, software subscriptions, professional learning. Um, that's kind of the big, big things. Hey, Brian, just so you know, or anybody else who's listening out there, if you go to the KSD website, um, and you click on the about, it says bonds and levies. And you click on bonds and levies and go halfway down that piece there. You can click on a hyperlink that says capital projects, technology, education levy, uh, or education flyer um, for the November 5th, 2024. You click on that and that gives you all the information uh, for every project um, right there on a two page flyer. Okay, thank you. And we get in the mail too, in that little flyer that comes out, uh, that, that little pamphlet that comes out uh, yep. every election. Thank you. If I may, we can make it even easier than that. If you go to just ksdlevy.org, it yeah. takes you right to the landing page for the yeah. current project and all that brochure and, and a lot more information is there as well. And while we're on the subject of the 2024 levy, uh, I will mention that we did build in uh, uh, contingency into the project budgets. Um, now this is not a large amount, but it should cover any uh, trending inflation that we were seeing in the past. And with that being said, uh, we do have the Mill Creek field project on there that may be covered uh, through a federal grant. And if that is the case, then we'll have basically 8 million that can go back into contingency. And I see this committee as, as um, community members that may be able to also help us determine if we have uh, money left over in contingency, what other projects that we're not able to make the list uh, that could be brought up, you know, to help this district out. Um, of course, all that goes to the board for approval um, and everything has to run through its proper channels, but having that community input is, is huge and would be very, very helpful for us. Oh, we have another question. Michelle. Sorry. Um, so speaking of Mill Creek, so my understanding is that if you, sorry, um, if you don't get the federal grant, you can't do the field at Mill Creek because you wouldn't be able to do the, we would not be able to do the um, flooding mitigation, which so it wouldn't make sense to do the field because you'd have a brand new field that was just being flooded the same as it is currently. That is, is that true. correct? Yes. Okay. And it's also my understanding that the grant doesn't cover actually the field, it only covers the flooding mitigation. So you'd still have to spend the money on the field out of the levy, correct? So Brett, let me jump in here real quick. Okay. So when we finalized the budget for it and the budget just got finalized, I think two weeks ago when we uh, submitted it uh, to the um, state or federal government, um, there was a line item in there for the field. I believe it was like 2.8, 2.7 million dollars that will go towards the field itself. It will field be able to track. cover it all. Yeah, it won't cover it all exactly. That's why we put it. We put a certain dollar amount in on the Mill Creek uh, in this levy so that any added items that needed to be done for that could be done. But yes, you're absolutely right. If the grant does not go through. It would not, uh, we would not, we would, if the community wanted us to put a new field in there, we would have to just let them know, like, we will put a new field in there, but if the flood mitigation plan from the city does not work on the dredging or the reestablishment project, 
we will not guarantee that that field will be better than it is today. Gotcha. And so then just a follow-up question, how do you get to that $8 million that would be left if you get that um, grant? Because if there, if you put in $2.3 million as a portion to cover part of the field, how does that make $8 million left over if you get the grant? I so apologize. I, I may have misspoken about um, you know the actual numbers. I'm just thinking mm -hmm. in, in large terms of contingency where you know, we, we finish certain projects and, and it doesn't have to be left. I mean, the Mill Creek, I just pulled that out as an example. Okay. Yeah. I just was curious, but I mean, let's, let's take the uh, roofs, for example, let's say we do, um, you know, all, all seven of the roof replacements. Mm -hmm. And at the end of everything we have, you know, let's say 6 million left over or 5 million. Uh, and that, and that's a very, very, um, you know, that's a very, uh, it's kind of a larger number, but um, let's say we do have some money left over and we know that, okay, um, uh, Millennium needs a roof replacement uh, and that's on the list, but Kent Elementary is near the exact same age, having the exact same issues, but didn't make the list. Uh, that's when we could determine, okay, some of this money uh, that is left over contingency and it can now go to this other project. And we can say, okay, well, we have, you know, um, Kent Elementary roof is on the list, and also, uh, you know, this other this other project, um, you know, that was also on on a prior list that didn't make the cut for the project list that we're currently doing could then be moved up and and voted on by the board uh, to then appropriate those funds to those specific projects. I hope that helps clarify. Thanks. Yeah, and just, just to add to that, Michelle, I mean, if, <clears throat> let's say worst case scenario, the, the levy fails in November or granted the EPA grants, um, and I was uh, responding back, which I, I know is already on social media, so it may be already public knowledge to everybody out there, um, that... Uh, the EPA grant comes with the expectation that uh, you will spend that $20 million in three years. So we have to start work absolutely immediately uh, on all of that, which means basically Mill Creek would be under construction for, for like three years uh, to do all of that work. Um, and so if by chance the levy failed and the money for the field or the remaining money for the field uh, was not available, we'd have to obviously run a levy again um, and be able to get that money uh, or we'd get ourselves put in a position that we'd have to come to the board and reprioritize um, levy funds and ask the board for permission to move um, project money from projects to another project to be able to, to finish that football field if it was within the three year time span um, that we needed to take care of the EPA grant, so. And uh, just to jump onto that one also, uh, the contingency that's uh, or the line item that's in the current grant, um, if the levy do, if the levy were to fail, and we would receive the grant, um, we could prioritize just like Dr. Berenger said some existing levy if we could. That would probably only make it a grass field and maybe not a synthetic field, which is not our goal. Our goal is not to keep creating get grass fields. Um, we really want to go to a synthetic standard, uh, a lighted field, and that allows not only our students and our staff, but our community um, to really be able to use those fields um, after hours uh, for after school programs and things of that nature. Lots of sports here. So uh, I think that's one of our big contingencies. That's why we put a certain dollar amount into uh, the levy uh, to upgrade that field. And, you know, we, we really, again, um, I know there's a lot of people out there think athletic fields versus HVAC or athletic fields versus a boiler. Well, uh, a boiler and a roof. Yes. Athletic fields. You have to remember our children are on those fields um, a lot. Uh, our students are on those fields and our communities on those fields. And when they do not drain and do not have um, uh, the applicable uh, playing area, um, it's really bad for our community.
we can actually talk about that after the meeting if you want to stick around. But we can we can definitely go through that as well. But definitely like yeah. to know tonight. Uh to repeat their question, uh it was in regards to our bidding process and and um how we actually go through uh from creating a project and going out to bid and receiving bids and ex bid acceptance um, and notice to proceed. So um yeah, we are we are getting close to time, but we could certainly dive into that process um, in our next meeting, and and uh, we'd be happy to share um, share that process with everyone. The only thing I wanted to say about that was if we could try to make sure that we take down notes on whatever we talk about that isn't part of the meeting, and then address that when we come to our next meeting, so that that whatever concerns they have are brought up with everyone, so that everyone hears it. Mm -hmm. And that was my link suggestion thank you right. yeah thank you well we are 10 minutes past our time i want to be respectful of people's evenings yeah there we go quick takeaways um uh takeaway number one uh i'd like to know for the next meeting um with the tech part of the upcoming levy is the goal i know we talked about students having internet at home and things like that um, is the goal to be able to eventually to work online to mitigate weather, inclement weather issues and things like that. I know other districts are doing that. I think all of us would like to see that. So we are not extending the school year into the summer anymore. Um, so I'd like to kind of bring that up for next time. And then the second issue is a really pressing issue. And this goes to community trust. Um, one thing that has come up a lot with the community is the whole camp issue. And, um, and I see a lot of gentlemen here, uh, probably who are VIPs qualified. And uh, I think it would go a lot towards building trust with the community if we see some administration uh, come in and chaperone camp when the, you know, this week, Schools need male chaperones. They have an emergency situation. So these are the things putting the rubber to the road that would really start to build trust with the community that it's not just slip service that, hey, Dr. Barriger is jumping in and going to camp because they need someone to go to camp or, you know, whatever. We've got a lot of guys here who, you know, could fill that role. So um, so I think just starting to think about that, how we can really, uh, build trust with the community in that way would be helpful. Um, that's all I have to Appreciate say. Appreciate you sharing that. Yes. Um, just an update on the camp issue. There, there is no chaperone shortage uh, for the, uh, Glen Ridge Martin Sortoon, uh, KLA camp that starts tomorrow as of 3.30 this afternoon, they are good to go. So and we're one shy for next week and we anticipate getting uh, that one for next week as well. So, but yes, I appreciate you sharing that. No more hands. Okay. No more questions online. Exactly. Well, I appreciate everyone taking the time this evening. Um, uh, what we will do is we will work to continue to have um, online uh, and in person, whether we meet here in the boardroom for our next meeting or we find a site, um, we'll communicate via email. Uh, but either way, it's um, I don't disagree that being able to find an option for, for everyone to be able to engage if they are able to, uh, we want to do that. Um, and there are plenty of things that people share that they'd like to have information on. We will come prepared to be able to share at least some of those pieces uh, to kind of set a foundation as we move forward. And then we can um, establish, um, right now we are meeting monthly and maybe we do meet monthly uh, for the first six or so months, but um, we can also talk about future uh, measures and, oh, sorry, I was trying to click on the next slide. <laughs> there you go. Just so you know, for the future, um, uh, unfortunately, because of the, the fails, the back-to-back -back fails, we've kind of put ourselves in a position where we were trying to get our poor voting community out of this voting fatigue issue that is very real, um, but 
we are now in a space again that the EPNO is a two year. We'll have to turn right back around in 2025, which is four months away uh, at some time in that calendar year and run uh, another EPNO levy. We'll talk about the next meeting. We can talk about the difference between EPNO levies and what they fund versus capital tech levies versus bonds. Then we've got the capital tech whenever um, that uh, passes we'd have to run again. And then we'd like to run a bond in November of 2028. Um, but again, all of this stuff, this group will be a part of, you're gonna help us work through to, to figure this out. And it might even help us work through like, when do we run it? What makes the most sense? We've got the data, we can look at the data of success rates in February and April, August and November and figure out what makes sense. Um, and uh, we would appreciate your help and support on that. But I mean, we're we're in for more, so we have to we have to be able to get this right. And so um, we just appreciate all of your time, appreciate your candidness. Again, you can reach out via email. We have a list of who is here this evening. I'll be reaching out to all of you that were here, as well as the larger group, to see if we can't continue to build um, on for the next opportunity, which I believe is October thirtieth day before Halloween. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll come with a list. I'll share a list of things and we can maybe prioritize those that are here, um, help us uh, figure out exactly what we want to cover next meeting. So. Bring your neighbors, bring your friends. We'd appreciate that. So if you know someone who'd want to come, be a part of it. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you all very much. Thank you.